Okay. One of my kids' favorite things are those crossover episodes. Um, my oldest loves the Arrow and the Flash crossovers. I know sometimes Super Supergirl gets in there. Anyways, this is a crossover. This is my first crossover event. So basically, I've got my YouTube channel and I'm going to be trying to add to it every week. And then, of course, I'm trying to get my podcast back to weekly episodes for you. One of the ways I'm going to do that is by sharing artist tips every once in a while. So this week's artist tip is all about framing. Now before we get into framing, I just want to remind you that I have recently opened up the enrollment for my Candy Color Studio Artist Membership. And this membership is going to be amazing. Instead of trying to cram everything that I have learned all these years into one course over a few weeks, what I've done is we're going to basically have a theme and we're going to work on that theme for a month. We'll, there will be actionable items and things for you to learn from and then at the end of the month we'll come together as a group and we'll ask questions and share experiences. So it will be this amazing opportunity because it will be this morph between learning courses and masterminds and a friendship with other artisans like it'll be incredible so the biggest thing is that I know that life is busy and I know everyone has a million things going on so basically what the membership will do will give you small things to work on every month that will add up to big things the thing that I found that's hard with courses is that you get so much crammed into your head in such a short amount of time that it's really hard to implement all of those things at once. So this way you can just do be doing little things and I think you'll see some amazing progress. The reason why I know it works is because this is what I've done with my business. If you listen to my episode with the 85%, you'll see that I just did one thing at a time. And as soon as I feel comfortable with one thing, I move on to the next. And that's what I'm going to be helping you do. So I'm super excited. Right now I've got a promotional um, price for this monthly membership. You pay just once a month. Right now it's at $40, but that is going to be going up. So please sign up as soon as possible. And um, I'm just really excited to see you guys in there. Okay, framing. This is one of those topics that I actually get asked a lot. And a really good friend asked me just recently. And so I'm like, okay, we need to talk about this. Now, the specific question that she asked was, is there like, a, I don't know, like is there a specific dimensions with framing like do galleries and museums want it to be a certain way well the truth is what I know that they like they like to have wire they like to have um, obviously they want it secure but they don't like the claw tooth um, anyways there's so many other possibilities out there but it seems like no matter how big or small your painting is the wire is really the most it's the easiest, the most consistent, and the safest for your artwork. So this is the wire that I like to use, and it's called Soft Strand. Okay, this is coated with wax. Now the original wire that I used for a long time is just typical steel, galvanized steel or whatever, and it actually hurts your fingers to work with it. Now, if you think about it, you're stretching it between your cradles and your frames and you're wrapping it. And a lot of times it gets really pokey on the ends and it can actually hurt you. So ever since my friend Crystal Harper told me about this waxed strand, um, it's it's been my go-to. And I actually just buy it on Amazon. This is a 500 foot roll. It's super easy to use. They actually have instructions on how to tie your wire and I've been tying it like that ever since. Um, what else can I tell you about this? I love to cut it with wire cutters, just like this, okay? However, I have used scissors in the past, so you can do that as well. So I'm gonna basically show you what I do. Um, let's start with this beauty right here, okay? So this is a two inch cradled painting. Obviously it's oval. There's your two inches. And then on the back, you can see my wire, okay? Now typically what I use are called D-rings. I would say these are the most common 
and you use these, you can tell they're just on the side. That's what goes into your frame or the um, cradle itself. And then we just have a simple screw that goes in the side. It's got a Phillips. It's really easy. I guess I should show you my, um, my handheld thing that I use, but you can use just regular or you can have a really nice power tool. Okay, so let's look at it a little bit closer. Basically what you do is you have that D-ring. There are some letters and numbers. That is the side that is not flat. I always put it on the flat side. So you always want to see the numbers and letters. You put that down and then so that your flat side is always down. Does that make sense? And then you're going to screw it right into either your frame or your cradle. Okay. Now the biggest question that my friend had was where do you put it into it? So personally, this is my, this is my personal opinion. The closer you can get to the top, the least or the, <laughs> the less that you will see the painting is actually falling out from the wire from the wall, okay? So I had a friend, I commissioned a painting, and the wire was no joke going straight across the middle. What happened? It like hangs off the wall like this, okay? Some people, believe it or not, like that. It's not my favorite thing. I would rather that it's flush with the wall, okay? To get that effect, you want to put your wire as close to the pop top as possible. It is good to have a little bit of space. So I try, depending on how big the painting is, to get between two inches and smaller, okay? Between the top and the wire, that much space, okay? And then when it hangs, it'll be basically, so I'm holding like it's the wall, just like that, okay? Now this is a good one to show you just because you really don't have a lot of space to work with. And even though it is somewhat in the middle of the painting in the back, I've given enough give to get it back there, okay? Let's show you what it looks like in behind the frame. Okay, so behind the frame, same thing. I screw right into the back of the frame, you can see right there, and then I have a little bit of give with my wire, okay? And then I want to make sure my D-rings are, you know, three or four inches below the frame if that's the if that's a if it's a medium to large one and then again no less or no more than two inches from the top of the cradle the frame okay so that hopefully that helps please feel free to ask lots and lots of questions um, again I personally like to have it flush against the wall you will find what you like but the important thing is having that wire tightly on your piece will keep it safe. The other thing that I have to mention is that I typically um, will just wrap it around and kind of tuck the, the end just so that it doesn't poke you. You can see right here how I have, I've gone around the wire and then I came back a little bit so this part won't poke us. Give us more space between the wrapped wires so that there's plenty of places for people to put their fingers when they're hanging up the paintings and they don't hurt themselves. So if you happen to buy one of my paintings back in the early days and you have the crappy wire, feel free to email me or just you know text me and come over to the studio and I will happily switch the wire to the waxed, the waxed wire because it's so much better. Okay, last thing that I would say is that I will be putting in my show notes um, the D-rings and the screws, and I usually buy those, I think it's a hundred in a box, and I buy those on Amazon. And the same thing with the soft strand, I'll have a link to that. Again, like I said, that's on Amazon. And I, I just think that the more you do it, the more comfortable you'll feel. And it's there's nothing better than having a beautifully framed piece of original artwork, or again, a beautifully wired, <laughs> cradled piece of original artwork. So. That is my tip for the day. Feel free to leave your questions in the show notes um, on YouTube or as well on my podcast or email me at k at katrinaberg.com and sell me, send me all your artist questions. And again, check out the membership. If you go on my website, katrinaberg.com, you will find about halfway down, there is a little um, a picture and it says membership. 
There's also a tab that says for artists. You can go in there and click and learn about the membership, but please jump on board. Basically what I'm doing is I'm enrolling for the next month and then we're gonna close it so that it becomes a tight knit group. We can work together and learn together. It's gonna be amazing. I won't be opening it up again until next year. So that's what we've got going on. I hope you enjoy the first crossover in the Candy Colored Studio and I hope everyone is having an awesome summer. Much love to all.